G'day and uh, welcome to another video with Better Picks. Hope this finds everyone well. Just wanted to very quickly go through today the options for saving images out of Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, you will have seen a previous video around the save options in Lightroom and there's a lot of options there. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And Adobe Camera Raw is not too dissimilar, but uh, still wanted to show you uh, very quickly the process of, uh, of saving images and the various file formats uh, and other options that are available. So you can see we've got a number of images here in Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, they're all uh, DNG images and they were previously converted to DNG from their uh, original raw files. So from here um, we will go through the process of saving. So I'm going to select all of those images which you can see has already happened. There's uh, down on the bottom right hand screen there there's 20 selected of 20 images. And all we need to do is click on save on the bottom left hand corner and the save options pop up uh, nice and quickly. So uh, starting off with the top option um, uh, up in presets, there's a number of presets that are available. Um, at the moment, I've just got it as a custom because I tend to choose a different option each time depending on what the requirements are. Uh, but you can create presets there as well, so based on the parameters that you put in there. Uh, so if we just click that, you can see it obviously gives us the option for that preset and you just need to pop a name in and it will be there ready to go. Next option down is in the destination. Uh, I always select in a, or save in a new location. The reason being is I find it fairly important to keep uh, images and files well organized. So for example, I have all of my uh, raw files or DNG files in a raw folder. And then if I'm saving them out to a different location, then I'll save them as, um, uh, for example, whatever uh, in a folder that uh, is a description of where they are going. So for example, if they're full resolution files as JPEGs, that's what I'll save them as. If they're web ready files for a client, uh, usually I save those uh, with a longer stage of a thousand pixels, uh, that's what I'll save them as. If they're going to be uh, specific for Instagram or Facebook, then that's what I'll save them as. Uh, however, each time I create a new version, I save them in a new location and that just helps me uh, stay nice and organized. We then have uh, the option for where we want to save them. Uh, so I'm just going to go in here, exported images and I'm going to go to web resolution today uh, and select that one. And so you can see I've just created those folders uh, in Windows and uh, I'm just going to, uh, as I mentioned, save them out into a web resolution uh, as an example today. And um, yeah, that's, the, that's the, the basic workflow that I go through. So I create all of those folders as I'm editing or as I need them. And uh, that's, uh, that's the option that I go for. You do have the option within Adobe Camera Raw, very similar to Lightroom when you save the files to rename them. Now, generally speaking, I uh, do my renaming within Adobe Bridge just because it's a workflow that I find comfortable and I'm accustomed to. And I can base the naming uh, or renaming, I should say, on the selection parameters that I've entered. Uh, there's a couple of links below that will show you videos that I've created around that. Uh, but you can, if you want, during the saving process from um, Adobe Camera Raw, you can save it as uh, a new name. You can see there's a whole bunch of options there um, from not only the name, but a uh, chronological number uh, to help keep them in the order that you've specifically created them in. Which means during that save process, you're able to rename your files to anything specific that you're requiring. So that's a good way to do it. Um, Moving down a little bit further, you can see the third option there is the format. So you can see we have the option of saving them as a digital negative, a JPEG, a TIFF, Photoshop and PNG. Um, so some great options there. Obviously it's uh, Adobe Camera Raw also gives you the option to convert your images uh, to digital negative. Uh, there's a link below for the video that I created uh, recently uh, using Adobe Digital Negative Converter. Um, to be able to convert your raw files to digital negatives. Um, however, you can do it through Adobe Camera Raw as well. Of course, this is assuming that you have a version of raw that will open your raw files. So the reason I created that video recently was for people who need to convert to digital negative because they have an older version of Photoshop or Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, uh, anything that means that they can't open their raw files uh, natively. 
so make sure you check out the link below for that one. Uh, however, generally speaking, the two file formats that I use the most are JPEG and TIFF. Uh, however, as I mentioned earlier, you can also convert to Photoshop and uh, or PSD document um, or PSD file, I should say, and PNG. So options there. You can see within JPEG um, uh, or any file format, uh, you have the option to save the metadata, which my recommendation is always to save all of it, uh, obviously based on the metadata that you may have also entered into the file. Uh, at the moment, we're saving it as a JPEG. I'm gonna go for quality 12, which is the maximum quality. You can see the options there. Uh, you can choose one from the drop-down box, or you can also enter in a number specifically. Uh, and you also have the option to limit the file size to uh, X number of K. So 1000K would be one megabyte. So for example, uh, I think I mentioned on a previous video, uh, if you, I've had to send through images to publications in the past and they've requested that the images be a maximum of two megabytes. So that would be 2000K that you would enter there uh, just to make sure that those files are that size or smaller. So we're not going to limit the file size today, but you can see that it's an option there if you need it. Now, color space, uh, lots of options with color space. Generally, the only two color space uh, options that I work with are either Adobe RGB or sRGB. Adobe RGB, I tend to save out because uh, um, uh, it's, a, it's a bigger color space and it, it just gives a little bit more flexibility with color editing. Uh, that's particularly useful when I'm printing. My lab uh, will print Adobe RGB, which it's worth checking with your lab if they which color space they prefer. Um, however, today because we're saving photos for web use, the best color space for that use is sRGB. So that's the one we're going to go for. Um, generally speaking, my recommendation, if your lab uh, only prints in sRGB or that's the color space they recommend, then edit in Adobe RGB and then change the color space over. Uh, to sRGB once your files are finished and ready for printing. So that's the options when it comes to color space and the reason today that I'm choosing sRGB as I mentioned because they're going or oh, their intent is for the web. All right next option down is image sizing. Now normally if I'm saving full resolution I won't click resize um, because obviously I just want the native resolution to be saved. However today as I mentioned I'm going to be saving for web resolution. Now generally uh, images that I send through to commercial clients um, I have them a thousand pixels on the longest edge. Uh, so you can see here next to the resize to fit which I've just checked there are a bunch of options. You can enter specific dimensions, the long side, short side, megapixels, percentage. Now, to get the long side, you can see I've just checked on long side there and it, it asks you to, to define uh, what that will be. So you can see it's automatically defaulted to a thousand pixels. So that means if it's a, a portrait orientation, then the height will be the longest edge and that will be a thousand pixels. If it's a landscape orientation, then um, the width will be uh, changed to a thousand pixels. If it's a square, then both sides are the same, so there'll be a thousand by a thousand. Uh, and if it's a panorama, then still the longest edge will be a thousand pixels. Uh, so that's that's a way when you're saving images out from Adobe Camera Raw, how you can quickly and easily convert um, uh, the images to a thousand pixels longest edge a resolution for web resolution you can go to 72 uh, pixels per inch or whatever the best uh, setting or option is uh, I'm gonna leave mine at 300 because it doesn't actually make any difference so um, uh, the important thing is the overall dimension uh, which I've been setting my images to that for a lot of years and uh, it's never been an issue all right, output sharpening. Now you do have the option to sharpen for screen, glossy and matte paper. This is exactly the same as Lightroom and the amount is standard, low or high. Now I don't generally sharpen on output. Um, I tend to do it uh, or I tend to sharpen more uh, while I'm going through the edit process because I just find that it gives me more options uh, and rather than a blanket application of sharpening. Of course, it's always worth experimenting, and if you find you get the results that you want from output sharpening, then for sure go for it. Uh, but just experiment and always test. It's always good to really make an informed decision based on what the best options are to achieve the results you want to. 
All right, so that's it really. It's uh, very straightforward, uh, very similar as I mentioned. Many of the options are exactly the same as Lightroom. Um, in fact, the whole process is very similar to Lightroom. Uh, you know, obviously, all being Adobe software, there's going to be sim similarities. Uh, but that's the um, the process of saving uh, through Adobe Camera Raw. Last step is to click save and you'll see there'll be a counter uh, of the number of images remaining down on the bottom uh, left hand side there and they'll click through until they're completed. And that's all done. Uh, so now if we hit done and if we go up to exported images and web resolution you can see all of those images are there and they are all in fact 1000 pixels on the longest edge which we can see right here on the dimensions and yep all 1000 pixels that's great so that's all perfect so these particular images have all been um, shot from different cameras in fact I think they're three different cameras but you can see they're all uh, been standardized in size to 1000 pixels longest edge so that's uh, that's uh, the process for saving out of Adobe Camera Raw uh, as always, there's plenty of options. Make sure you choose the ones specific to your needs and you should be good to go. Hope this has been helpful and thanks again for stopping by. Look forward to seeing you in the future and take care.